So instead of actually working on my starter kit and finishing it, I got distracted and started building out a framework that's very inspired by Convex with this real-time database updates. Maybe you can say this is inspired by Laravel Livewire. Um, also kind of like HTMX, I like the philosophy of HTMX of like, try not to write any JavaScript, let HTMX handle the small stuff that you need. Let me show you a quick little demo of what I built and I'll show you the code and kind of show you the repo if you want to check it out yourself. I'll probably abandon this like I do all my projects. So let's go ahead and click on ice cream and I want you to notice on the right, this is getting updated, okay? So this is all real time. If I were to load up another tab over here, you'll see that again, it's connecting to the same data source and updating when any event uh, kind of changes in the backend. And some things I wanna point out about this is that this entire thing is being pushed over inside of WebSocket events. The browser gets that and it basically replaces, kind of like HTMX was built to do, it replaces the entire inner HTML with the new backend rendered HTML. And just to show that, let's go to WebSockets and click this. And I want to go to the other tab and just vote on ice cream real quick. You'll see that we get a request that comes in and you can view it. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's probably a little bit small. You see that we get back a bunch of HTML over the wire. We get a key and we also get some HTML. And so we'll see in a second the code how this works, but basically the key is used to find a DOM element that's using that key. And it just swaps out the new HTML that's coming over the wire. So that's kind of how it's working. Now I do want to walk you through um, a diagram before I dive into the code because I think this is really cool. I had fun trying to build this out. It didn't take too long to do, but uh, I think you might learn something from it. So before diving into the framework and how it kind of works under the hood, I just want to show you the consumer of the library, how they can basically build what you just saw. So we have some templates. So I'm calling this a parabola is the library and you can create templates in the main template is kind of like your entry point. Like I'm kind of treating this like a single page application where we assume there is a main thing on the page. And when the page loads, you can inject something. So over here, I can just say like, uh, instead of putting a poll, I can just say, hello world and save this. If you go back to the app, you'll see hello world pop up. Now, the reason this is working is because we have a P template here called main. And when the page loads, there's some JavaScript, just a little bit of JavaScript that runs and says, hey, find me the, the P main and go ahead and swap this out with uh, whatever we return in this JSX here. Now you'll see that this JSX returns another div that has a P template of poll, which is basically defined down here, okay? And so what this is doing is when this gets rendered into the front end, the front end is going to get that poll Let's just go here and expand it a little bit more. And you'll see, and you'll see there is a P template poll. Um, but let's go ahead and see what happens when this page actually loads. Because there's, there's some stuff going on with the website. Because I'm going to refresh the page. And we'll click on this. And you'll see that when the page first loads, it does a request. And it says, hey, give me the payload for main. And then the back end is going to send over this. And then the front end gets that payload. It injects it into the page. And then it reruns a small little piece of JavaScript to basically say, oh, I found something called P template poll. Go ahead and send a WebSocket event and give me the poll information. Okay, so then the back end is going to run this and it's going to send over this div. And you'll see here we get back this HTML and that gets basically swapped into the page. So that's kind of how it's working. Every time it sees a P template in the front end, it just sends a WebSocket event and then the back end is going to do something and send back some data. So if you look at this form, you'll see there's a P action called vote. And what this is doing is basically when this form gets submitted, I go ahead and like prevent default, but then I send off a WebSocket event to my uh, Parabola WebSocket server. And that's kind of listening for action events to come in. And based on the type or the key, I guess I should say, it's going to go ahead and run down any actions that are subscribed to vote. So over here we say parabola.actionVote. You can run something in our case, we potentially could write to a database, we could read from a database, but eventually what you need to do is you just invalidate one of these templates. So in our case, we're saying invalidate poll, and then Parabola is going to recompute, and then it caches that DOM, okay? So it caches this in memory, and then it broadcasts this template to every single person who's on my application listening for this poll template. So what this allows you to do is you can have multiple people kind of connect to the same page and interact with some DOM elements. And again, I'm not writing any JavaScript. Like this, this, what you're seeing right here, this is all the code you needed to get this basically working. 
Um, there's some things I want to add in like HTMX for loading indicators and stuff like that. So that's a quick overview of the code. Now I'm going to kind of do this from scratch so you kind of see how easy I thought this pretty was to uh, get this going. So I'm going to say parabola dot uh, template main. And then we want to go ahead and just return a div that says like hello world. Let's make sure this works. If I save it, go back. We now get live reloading for that. That was like unintentional, but there's live reloading that happens because the WebSocket event is going to refetch the new uh, container and swap it out when it notices that the connection got disconnected. Okay, so let's just do a quick little button. Um, so let's say that we have uh, the need to have a form here, and that form could have a button called like increment. You know, let's just do a counter because that's like the most basic example. But on the form, you can say P action, and we'll say increment. Okay, and then secondly, what we're going to do is just put some state in memory. So I'll say let count is equal to zero. And what we need to do is when this action fires, uh, you know, we can also just interpolate that count here. Okay, so basically you click on this button, it should submit the form, it calls an increment action. Now we don't have an action defined, so let's make one here. Go ahead and do this. And the main takeaway again is you can modify your database, you can modify your backend or whatever, and then you call invalidate on whatever template might be listening to this data. So now I can just go ahead and click on this button and it's going to go ahead and update. Any tab that's open to this app will also get the latest version. Point, this is just like something fun that I wanted to work on, but using it, it actually feels pretty cool. It actually feels pretty nice that you can quickly build out really reactive UIs with very, very little effort. Um, and I kind of took pieces from like Next.js, like the whole idea of like a, a server action that calls an action that you define here. I took the idea of like revalidate path. Instead, I'm just saying invalidate a template and that'll just force everyone to basically get a new copy of the latest version. And then also like I was really inspired by how Convex kind of works because again, Convex does stuff a little bit different. Convex, if you haven't known, is a backend as a service I use in my videos and then also my side projects. But Convex's reactivity is to the database level. So instead of me manually having to say invalidate main, Convex is listening to what data your views are subscribing to and it automatically revalidates them and sends over you the latest data if the rows that your subscriptions are listening to change. Um, so yeah, definitely took some inspiration from there, but I thought this was pretty cool. Now let's talk about uh, how this all kind of works. So I'm gonna draw out a diagram and let's kind of walk through that counter example. So we have a user and that user is basically clicking a button. And that user is first of all going to load the application. So he is going to fetch the app and we'll say one, we'll say load app. And what happens is the JavaScript that I basically embed when the page loads, if I were to go to Parabola over here and go to our server, I think it's oh, actually, I think it's Parabola JS, okay? This is like the, the little JavaScript code that's running to do the whole swapping but also i have a server which you'll see here in the body it just has like a a main okay so this this is like the the layout if you're familiar with nextjs this is the layout and it just has a main entry point and what happens is that that main entry point gets sent back and then it's going to load in the parabola js client side script which just runs over the dom elements and then it checks for whenever we have templates and so if we find a template it just does a select query all with p template. It loops through all of them. And then it sends off WebSocket events to the back end saying, hey, I need to subscribe to that template I just saw. And so in our case, it's just subscribing to main. So we'll go over here and we'll say like, uh, we see a p template main, subscribe to it. Okay, and so my back end, I'll just say parabola server. It's going to see that, hey, a user is basically wanting to subscribe to this main template. And what it's going to do is it's first of all going to send over any cached template. So it's going to send over any cached main uh, template that it already has. But uh, the fourth thing what it does is it basically stores, stores the key plus the WebSocket in a map. Okay, and the, the point of that is, is basically later on when you call invalidate and you say, hey, I want to invalidate the main template, it looks up and says, okay, well, what is, who is listening for the main template? And let's go ahead and have them all re-render their, their version of main. Okay, so that's what happens when you first load. So I'm going to say load the page for the first time. 
and that's going to get back the main template and again it's going to keep on subscribing to whatever p templates it finds but then at some point let's let's do the flow where someone actually clicks on a button so let's just grab this and i'll paste it down here clicks on increment okay that's going to be the next thing i want to kind of walk you through so basically so the user submits that p action form and it happens to have a key of for example increment okay so this sends over a websocket event the parabola server is going to say hey i just got an event from a user um, that is trying to call increment so invoke increment action and that action happens to call invalidate main okay and so again, when it calls invalidate main under the hood, the parabola server is going to loop through these keys and say, you know what? There's like 20 people listening for main. Let's just go ahead and send off a bunch of different WebSocket events with the latest version of that main template to all of these users who are kind of like listening to that. Okay. So this is kind of how that's working. And I mean, I think that's like the gist of it, how it all kind of works. I mean, it's, it's not too sophisticated. I guarantee you it probably has a bunch of bugs. So I can try to give a quick overview how this code works. We have different classes here. So I have the main parabola class, which has a dispatcher, a renderer, and a control bus. And then also has like a Hona app that we uh, can give access to if anyone wants to like do anything special. But the main idea is when the app first loads or someone hits our main root level, we render out that layout. And it also has access to the client side parabola JS. That kicks off, like I mentioned, and it's going to then bind to some WebSocket events. So here's a WebSocket server that we set up and basically when a client sends over a payload, it has a type in it. And if it's a type of template, we are going to subscribe that user to that key. And then we're also going to fetch back anything that happens to be cached and just return that. So if there is no currently cached view, we call renderer.update and we like generate one. Just in case this is like the first time a user has hit your running application, we have to like generate that and then send off an event to everyone who might be listening to it. Otherwise, we just go ahead and give them back that cache version, okay? And here is where we're listening for the action where we basically call controlbus.invoke, which like I mentioned is going to basically run this action and then you can call invalidate where you want in this, okay? So let's kind of look at the dispatcher where we subscribe. Again, it's just a simple map where we just, you know, you can subscribe or unsubscribe, which is gonna add you or remove you from that map. And then over here is the important part. We have this dispatch function where when you call invalidate, it's going to call dispatch, which is going to basically loop through all the sockets that are listening for a particular key. And it sends off that, uh, that data, right? In this case, data is just like a string, but it's going to have the HTML ultimately. So let's go ahead and look at the, um, the control bus invoke, because this is where we are basically saying, hey, someone is running an action. And we need to go and again run any action that has that key. So pretty straightforward. It just takes a callback. It runs the action with some data. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm actually kind of confused what this is doing. Like I'm not sure why this is calling renderer. Um, you know when you write code and you don't even remember what you wrote? Because I think this is calling this action with invalidate. Uh, so I think... Um, I don't know. I swear I wrote this code. I don't even remember what it does at this point. I got to refactor it. But somehow it does something. And then uh, I think we're just passing like the render function into this as a callback. And so the action can call invalidate, which I think maybe this is what's what's happening. So I think it's calling this. When you call this invalidate function with a key, it calls renderer.update. And what that's doing is it's looking up the template based on that key. It just re-renders the JSX, gets the string, it sets the cache for that HTML, and then it dispatches the new version of the HTML to everyone who might be subscribing to it. Okay, so that's kind of like the full loop. I know it's kind of, I got kind of confused there, but that's how it works, but it allows you to basically do cool stuff like this, where you have fully reactive little components and pages with uh, very little code. So if you want to check this out, um, if you thought this was cool, feel free to, it's in a GitHub repo. I will link it in the description. It'll be here, Parabola.js. Feel free to do what you want with it. I don't know if I'm going to revisit this. I just had to scratch the itch of building this because it was just something that came to my mind. I'm like, this is really cool. I want to build this. And I did. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. Happy coding.